بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. When a companion said, a man came to the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Yeah, said, Yeah, Rasulullah, Dullani ala amilin, Ida amiltuhu, Ahabbani lahu, wa ahabbani nas. Oh, Rasulullah, tell me about an action that if I do this action, Allah will love me, and then the people will love me. He didn't say the people will love me, then Allah will love me. I want Allah to love me first and foremost. But I'm a human being. Human beings by the nature flock towards other human beings and want human beings to love them. So he asked the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what can I do? The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Izhad fi dunya yuhibbaka Allah. Wazhad fi ma anta nas yuhibbaka nas. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, have zuhud in the dunya. Meaning, be ascetic, meaning don't love the dunya. Don't have your heart connected to it. Don't chase it. Don't run after it. Don't lust it. Don't envy it. And Allah Azza wa Jal will love you. Because the person, the Ikhwani, that he makes his hope and his aspirations and his focus to be the Akhirah, he's not going to worry about the dunya. He's not going to worry about the harms that come to him in the dunya because he'll realize that it's written to him by Allah Azza wa Jal. And whatever he is given, he's going to appreciate it, knowing and realizing that while he was being formed in the mother, when the angel blew in the soul into the embryo while it was still developing, that these are one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the angel to write. Commanded him to write his risk, his sustenance, what he's going to get. Whatever hits you, it was never meant to pass you. Whatever passed you, it was never meant to hit you. So whatever he's given, he's going to be appreciative to that. He's not going to chase the dunya. He's going to want with, 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 with that, that which is with Allah. And then he's going to live a life of ease and a life of comfortability. But the person, the person who loves what the people have, and the person who looks with the envious eye, with hasad, and he wants what they have, He's going to live his life in misery. This is why the Nabi Sallallahu said, Wazhad fima and the nas yuhibbaka nas. And do not desire, stay away from what the people have. The people will love you. The people will love you. You know, who loves the person that's always trying to get something? Who loves the person that always has their hand out? Who loves the person that's always looking at a brother? Why is his house bigger than mine? Why is his car newer than mine? Why is it bigger than mine? Why are his clothes and stoves better than mine? And they can feel that. How would you love a person like that? But the person that you know and you love, who is your friend, and he's not your friend or your brother because you're giving him money. He's not envious of what you have. Rather, he loves what you have. And he prays Allah to put barakah, to put blessing in what you have in order to protect you from the evil eye. This is someone who the people will love. And do we think that Allah is not sufficient for us? You know, Ikhwani, an important point. Allah will keep poverty from a slave and give him wealth in order to keep him upright, knowing that poverty wouldn't be good for him. Some people are like that. If they're, in, if they're struck with poverty, call us, they lose everything. They're Iman, all of that. They can't live in poverty. And also Allah Azawajal keeps wealth from someone and causes them to live in poverty because he knows it's better for them. Some people, you know, they call it new money, new money. They get money, they don't know what to do with the money. All they do is buy big cars with the money and the money opens a whole nother door. Money opens a whole nother door. Things that maybe you thought of doing, things that you wanted to do, the door is open now. You got that money, you can do whatever you want. So Allah will keep it from some people because He knows that the people won't be able to handle it. And then the last and the least one, have zuhud. Have zuhud, the real type of zuhud. I'm not talking about he's a zahid because he has holes in his thobe. He's a zahid because he wears the same thobe or the same shoes. No, that could be a form of zuhud. No, there was people in the past, our salaf, that was a form of zuhud. But the real zuhud is, like Imam Ahmed said, if you're given money, you don't rejoice over it. And if it's taken away from you, you're not saddened by it. 
You don't inherit $5 million from your aunt overseas. When you hear about it, you start tap dancing on top of the kitchen room, the kitchen room table. No, you say, Alhamdulillah, this is risk from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the next morning you find out that money is all gone. You're not gonna do like those Wall Street, you know, the Wall Street uh, bankers did in the earth during the depression and throw yourself out of the window and kill yourself because of the money. No, you have the money Allah gave it to you and put it in your hand and then you use it the way that you choose. It's not in your heart. So if it comes, you're not, you don't rejoice. If it's taken, you're not uh, displeased over that.